Hello, happy Friday, Calvary family and those who are joining our Word of the Day. Today we have a fantastic discussion. Hopefully, it's about the fall. We look, not the fall as far as weather. I know it's getting warm right now. It's bumping over 100 and you wish it was still in the 60s, but it's not. But this is the, concerning the fall of man. And it's found in the book of Genesis. So if you'll grab your Bible, open to the book of Genesis chapter 3. I want to read a few verses and then I want to just share a few thoughts if that'll be all right with you. So follow along with me if you would. Genesis chapter 3. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord had made. He said to the woman, Did God actually say you shall not eat? Of the tree in the garden. And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said, You shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die, for God knows that when you eat of this fruit, of your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. You see, she also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate. And then the eyes of both were opened and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loincloths. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of God. God amongst the trees of the garden, but the Lord God called to them. He called to the man and he said, where are you? Now remember, this is God, right? Where are you? And he said, I heard, the man said, I heard the sound of you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself, he said. Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree which I commanded you not to eat? And the man said, it's that woman whom you gave to me, with me, she gave me fruit of the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord said to the woman, What is this thing that you have done? Now, we could throw a lot of blame, we could cast a lot of blame, but let's talk seriously just for a minute. Now, Scripture uses the word serpent in the book of John, and in Paul's writing, he identifies the serpent, they both identify the serpent as Satan. And remember, this wasn't necessarily the snake slithering at this point the way we visualize him. We don't really know what he looked like. But he was more crafty than any other animal that God had created in the garden. Satan wanted to create doubt about the authority and the intentions of God. So he appealed to mortality. Surely you won't die. You surely won't die. Satan even tried to appeal to our natural selfish nature to look out for ourselves. You'll be wise. You'll become wise. Satan played on the emotions of the woman to help us justify doing wrong. It is good for food. He actually appealed to the humanity of our hunger and our humanity of physical abilities, our human nature. Then he appealed to her vision. What more better way to trap someone is to show them something and, and trick them into believing. He also appealed to her desire to make one wise. All lies, all lies from the king of deception, Satan himself. They, however, gave into the temptation. We had one rule. It was, don't eat of this particular fruit. But they ate of it. And when they did, it created sin. And sin separates us and all of humanity from that day forward from the creator of the universe, from God. 
Sin creates shame in our lives. Remember what he said? We realized that we were naked and we hid ourselves from you. And what was God doing? Every evening he would walk and he would have fellowship. God desires to have fellowship with us on a day-to-day -day basis. You see, God desires an intimate relationship with each of us. He comes looking for us the same way he came looking for Adam and Eve. We had only that one rule, but we chose to break it. And from the book of Genesis all the way through the book of Revelation, 66 books, God is spending his energy, his focus, his insight, trying to reconcile us to him. By the way, he did that on the cross. And his name was Jesus. He reconciled us to himself. The forgiveness of sin was given when the blood was shed and the, and the surrender became real. Jesus surrendered his life for your life. So here's my question. It's been a pretty heavy conversation. We don't like to look at things and mistakes that we've made, but have you surrendered your desires to do things your way? Are you caught in a trap right now? Currently, is there something that you would like to change? Maybe you're even doing the hide game, the bob and the weave away from God. But trust me, God is walking and he's looking for you. Friends, it's so freeing when we choose to surrender to God's call of repentance in our lives. Simply confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. That starts that relationship and then when we mess up, here's what God asks us to do. If you confess your sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. God reconciles us, puts us back in a right relationship with him. Will you join me on the journey of freedom from sin today? Join me in prayer. Father, thanks. Thank you, Lord, that uh, we can learn from others' mistakes. Lord, we don't learn so much about what we do right, but Lord, we learn an awful lot when we make mistakes. And Father, we have an account of someone who paved the way for us to rebuild our relationship with you. And so I'm praying that those who listen to these words will not just read Genesis 3, but they'll continue to read, they'll continue to enjoy, they'll continue to learn more about your son Jesus, that it will change their lives, and that they'll become an intimate friend with you. And stop hiding. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.